Well, it's time now for our international press review. And for that, I'm joined once again in the studio by Deepti Laurent. Hi, Deepti. Hi, Axi. Now, the US's announcement of a new coalition to fight against attacks on commercial ships transiting uh, through the Red Sea, uh, it's garnering a lot of attention in the press today, Deepti. Yeah, that's right. It is garnering a lot of attention in the press today, Haxi. Tensions have been bubbling since Iran-backed Houthi rebels from Yemen attacked uh, an Israel-linked merchant vessel uh, a month ago in the Red Sea. They filmed themselves doing so, and this this video really uh, uh, garnering a lot of international attention. Since then, the rebels have multiplied attacks on, uh, a, the, on this stretch of water, so much so that shipping companies are no longer... Uh, sailing through these waters, uh, prompting Liberation today to uh, declare a, a blue fear in the Red Sea. Uh, la peur bleue in French really meaning some, uh, a very deep-seated fear or deep-seated anxiety that this uh, crisis has uh, clearly triggered. Because indeed, the, the Houthis said in a statement uh, that they will continue to prevent ships heading to Israel from using uh, from using the Arabian or Red Seas until more food and med medicine is allowed into Gaza um, to help Palestinians there. Focusing on uh, the U.S. Uh, announcement as well, this is Arab News, the Saudi Arabian paper, which focuses on the, the U.S.'s announcement that it will form a 10-country coalition, including um, a, a, a coalition including Britain, France, Bahrain, and Italy, for instance, who will really be... Uh, patrolling the waters uh, to protect these uh, protect shipping uh, co companies and containers from these type of attacks. Uh, we found uh, this from Al Thawra, which is actually a um, Houthi Yemeni publication. Uh, this is its front page today, uh, and you see here it's uh, publishing a picture of the Bab al Mandab. That's the strait that connects the Red Sea to the Gulf of Aden and Arabian Sea. Uh, noting here that it is this uh, this strait of water is closed. Uh, it also reacts to that announcement of the U.S. coalition in this uh, front page uh, in this uh, uh, in this newspaper today. It says that all nations participating uh, in this coalition are thus uh, directly responsible for the, quote, genocide that Gaza is being subjected to. And Dipti, this body of water is, it's important to say, crucial to global trade. Well, if you look at the, the figures, it's quite astounding. Uh, the Red Sea accounts for 12% of global trade, but also a whopping 30% of shipping uh, of container shipping, the the foreign policy uh, foreign policy has a very interesting article today looking at how it will affect um, uh, the delivery of goods and merchandise around the world. Um, the uh, the frequency of attacks is also you know naturally causing great alarm among uh, global shipping lines. Uh, the Danish shipping giant Maersk and the Swiss MSC are among those who have said that they will temporarily halt using these waters. This is a really interesting article from Foreign Policy, despite, despite a rather flippant headline, because of course it's not just about Christmas gifts, but it is interesting because uh, uh, it, it, it gives us some uh, key details. Firstly, uh, the, the magazine explains that this is a very different case. This is not a case of shipping being disrupted because of a war, uh, like for instance, a war in Ukraine, but rather being targeted because of a war. Um, Secondly, the attacks mean that war insurance for shipping will naturally go up, which means that this will be then uh, passed on to consumers, so consumer prices of goods will go up. And with the diversion uh, of companies using other routes, there will be major delays and increased costs for the transport of all goods. So it's not looking so rosy right now. And Deepti, moving on to uh, another story that's making some waves uh, in the press uh, today. Uh, lots of reaction to the Vatican's decision to allow priests to offer blessings to same-sex couples. Yeah, it does come with some conditions, but essentially the Vatican has announced that it will allow priests to... Uh, to give blessings to couples who aren't allowed to marry in the Catholic Church, such as divorcees and same-sex couples. Uh, it's gaining a lot of attention in the French press, notably uh, La Croix, the French Christian paper today, which uh, uh, which talks about this uh, this blessing for uh, new uh, new partnerships or new couples. Uh, it hails the decision as a major evolution, but one that is also carefully regulated, the paper says. The Vatican 
uh, has said that this decision does not mean that it will recognize gay marriage. It still maintains that marriage is a union between a man and a woman, but some have hailed it as uh, the right step forward uh, in terms of addressing the issue of discrimination in the Catholic Church. Not everyone agrees with it. This is from The Guardian, the British Daily, which remains quite uh, skeptical. It says that Pope Francis allowing blessings for gay couples is significant, yes, but it is not seismic. And nonetheless, uh, The Guardian does remind us that uh, it comes a month after the Vatican also agreed to um, allow uh, transgender people to be baptized in the Catholic Church and even serve as godparents, once again, under certain conditions. Well, here in France, uh, Dipti found a story uh, that's causing a lot of controversy and then controversy because of the controversy <laughs> in a lot of circles as well. A debate erupting over uh, the hairstyle of the newly crowned Miss France. Yeah, we can say that all these layers of controversies are pretty ridiculous, uh, or at least ludicrous at, at best, uh, Haxi. This story was picked up widely in the international press this Tuesday. Uh, Yves Gilles was crowned Miss France uh, on, uh, on the weekend in, in a beauty pageant that, uh, despite seeming antiquated as it is, is still extremely popular here in France. It's, uh, it still garners a, a quite a sizable TV audience. Uh, she's become the first candidate with short hair to win. Uh, she hailed her victory uh, as a win for di diversity. I, I assume she means cap capillary diversity. Uh, critics, though, did accuse pageant organizers of wokeism, um, or at least pandering to wokeism by appointing her the winner. They say that her short hair and her an androgynous look is uh, a little too woke, even though the vote is shared between the public and the jury. In addition uh, to the hair, she's also being criticized for her uh, androgynous look. Thankfully, though, many have leapt to her defense uh, and really uh, shut down the criticism, including uh, pageant organizers and even some French politicians. Well, I should say, it's not a hugely androgynous look she's sporting in that picture there, <laughs> by any account. Um, and uh, Deep Tea, uh, you're going to end on a story about um, chimps and bonobos. Apparently, uh, they've got impressive memories, certainly better than mine. Yeah, that's, uh, these results were uh, published in a science journal. It's uh, been picked up by the Times of London today, uh, which found that bonobos and chimps can remember old friends, family members and group mates that they knew decades ago and whom they haven't seen in decades. Uh, scientists used a pretty ingenious tactic. They gave the apes uh, juice boxes uh, so that uh, they would be able to uh, stand still and then look in, into an infrared camera uh, and, the, and the researchers then observed their visual reactions as they showed them two stimuli, one, uh, of, uh, one a photo of an ape that they once knew and another of a complete stranger. And they found that in most cases, uh, the apes uh, reacted by staring longer, uh, slightly longer, but staring longer at the first stimul uh, stimulus, that is the photo of an ape that they once knew. Pretty astonishing findings because uh, it suggests that long-term memory uh, is a, a sort of common evolutionary trait that we humans share with uh, apes, uh, with chimpanzees and bonobos, uh, which also means that our, we have a common ancestor um, that dates back millions of years ago who also had this trait. So uh, very, very uh, interesting findings for uh, evolutionary science. Tipti Kilohan with today's International Press Review. Thank you very much.